Sir Clifford Sifton was born in Middlesex County, Canada West, now Ontario, the son of John Wright Sifton. John was a contractor and businessman who moved with his family to Manitoba when Clifford was a boy. Clifford trained as a lawyer and graduated from the University of Toronto in 1875. Sir Clifford Sifton worked on his father's political campaign before being elected to the Legislative Assembly of Manitoba in 1888. Sifton served in the cabinet of Thomas Greenway from 1891 to 1896 as Attorney General and Provincial Lands Commissioner. In 1896, Sifton was elected as Member of Parliament and served as Minister of the Interior under Laurier. As Minister of the Interior, he started a vigorous immigration policy to encourage people to settle and populate the West. He wanted very much to uh, make sure that the West was settled uh, by people that would be able to uh, adapt to the challenging climate. Uh, and for that reason, he uh, did appeal uh, to uh, Americans in the American Midwest that uh, with the uh, vast amount of land that was available in Canada, as well as people from Central and Eastern Europe. Uh, his biggest concern being, of course, the, uh, the prairie winters and the people he felt uh, would be able to, uh, to adapt to them. He was knighted for his, for his, uh, his work uh, in the uh, settlement of Western Canada, and that was January 1st, 1905. Uh, being knighted at that point would, be, uh, was, would have been considered an incredible honor. I would say that it was something not taken lightly. His immigration policy was spot on. He understood the, the types of people that needed to settle uh, Western Canada. Uh, you look back now on the legacy and it's probably, uh, you know, we do have a very strong rural community, farming, agriculture. Uh, and I think if people, a lot of people can trace that back to, uh, to their ancestry and, and their ability to be able to survive. Sir Clifford Sifton had enjoyed business success early on, acquiring land in B.C. that he later sold after the railroad had expanded into the West. He also purchased a very important newspaper in Manitoba. Uh, he purchased the Manitoba Free Press in uh, 1898 while in Parliament. It was kept very quiet and he uh, did maintain a rather hands-off uh, position with the paper. He would from time to time uh, give some direction or suggestions rather on uh, editorials but he did allow the paper to have its autonomy and uh, under the uh, editor John Dafo who uh, was a power into his own right the paper uh, flourished. Sir Clifford Sifton was an avid horseback rider a trait that permeated the family. His passion was horses it has been noted several times that uh, uh, I mean, he would talk about horses as most people would talk about a cat. I mean, it was just sort of, you know, there were always horses in the backyard and, uh, and the kids, this is how they grew up. And, uh, but it was an incredible passion of his. Primarily, the passion was for jumping. Uh, they also did have uh, used uh, horses for uh, hunt, uh, for the fox hunts. Just general pleasure riding uh, in Toronto as well as uh, at his uh, summer place that he built in Brockville, Ontario. Sir Clifford and the five sons were, you know, they, they pushed themselves absolutely in business as well as in pleasure. I mean, you know, if you, you were going to be jumping, I mean, you had to be the best. Uh, and in business, it was the same thing. I mean, you know, be fair, but they had to be hard nosed as well. When the, his five sons that he had, when they were all uh, young adults, uh, Sir Clifford did make them all put, uh, swear an oath on the family Bible that they would never touch alcohol. And the five sons, to their days that they died, they never touched a drop of alcohol. Sifton died in 1929 in New York City, where he had been visiting a heart specialist. He left a legacy that lives on today. The legacy has evolved so incredibly, as Western Canada has. I, th I think a lot of people do just take for granted the way things are now and uh, perhaps, you know, don't really look back at uh, as far back and, and can't appreciate perhaps what was accomplished in those days. Probably you could honestly say that Sir Clifford's gifts to the community was probably physically the people, bringing the people into the country and uh, allowing Western Canada to, to grow and expand as it has. When the company was sold in 1981, uh, at that time, my, uh, my late aunt Carolyn uh, had the foresight to uh, establish a, a charitable foundation. 
uh, she is uh, she had no children and uh, it has been something quite rewarding over uh, 30 years now the uh, foundation distributes approximately seven hundred thousand dollars a year uh, to charities in the Winnipeg and Brockville Ontario areas uh, and over the 30 years now we are just uh, we have just uh, gone over the total of 21 million dollars that we've been able to do, to donate uh, so in a lot of ways that is a great legacy to be carrying on and giving so much back to the community. I think it's it's quite remarkable I mean uh, back in the day I mean uh, the papers you know business he was very successful there's no doubt but it is amazing that in this day and age that we've been able to take even what is just a small portion of what my aunt got uh, from the sale of the company to be able to to grow it and and to give back so much uh, to the community I don't imagine Sir Clifford could ever have imagined that uh, this is uh, what would have happened.